What's happening guys? Mike Smith here at Cal Speed Karting, and this is your Super Series preview for round number 7. We have 4 rounds to go in the 2021 Championship, and 3 of the 4 events will be on repeat tracks, starting with New Otivo this weekend. When we were here last for season opener, it would be Paulo Franca bringing home the win over Alyssa Yanni and Sam Hunt, with Hunt also clocking the track record in the process. Fast forward to last month, and you again see Paulo Franca on the event preview pick, but this time it's P2 to the guy who scored his third career win at round number 6, Ayrton Damas. Joining that duel was another Damas, as Ayrton's dad, Max, brought home his first career podium in third. Last month certainly shook some things up in the standings, and the possibilities of moving forward as points tightened up and new faces stepped up to apply the pressure. We'll cover the overall and each of the subcats today as we start to get down to the final few races of the season. First up, the overall championship. Sam Hunt had his first tough round of the year last month, but because of a stellar year so far, his drop meant that very few points were lost. As I mentioned earlier, it was a podium for Sam at the opener here, where he also scored the pole position and a heat win. Now to see if he rebounds from last month and gets back to his front-running ways. It was another podium for Paulo Franca last month, but frustratingly for him, very little ground gained in the championship. Winner the last time we were here, He'll be looking to capitalize on the small swing in fortune from last month on a track where he's already excelled at, and things have already gone his way a bit, getting in from the wait list after the event sold out. Back-to-back -back podiums has allowed Ayrton DeMoss to chip away at the guys in front of him to now just 10 points back from P2 and solidly inside the top 5. We head now to a new Otivo track where he qualified P2 overall at the opener, backing it up with a pair of top 3s in his heats and a top 10 in the main. Let's see if he can make it three podiums in a row this weekend. Sean Fight's podium streak halted at three last month, but he still put up a pretty solid day with another top ten and solid points to his name. It was a P6 for the former champ at the opener, but back in 2019 it was a podium after scoring the pole position and heat win. He has some serious ground to make up if he's going to challenge for title number two, but this is the place where he could make some noise. And speaking of former champs in noise, Aliciani won here in 2019 and was again on the podium at the opener, proving her affinity for the track. She also qualified P3 in both visits, making this the prime opportunity to challenge for big points yet again this weekend. Sitting in the final hardware spot too, it will be just as much holding on as it is trying to go get it here for the veteran. After a pair of tough rounds in a row, Michael Hazelwood will be looking to flip the switch and get back to being at the sharp end here in the mains this month. A welcome sight is the No Tivo circuit, where he had the second best run of the year so far with a P4 main back in January, and also won the Ironman that day. It's been a bit of a roller coaster year for Evan Karp, but after missing round number 5, he was back at round number 6 and looking just as strong as earlier in the year. Speaking of, the start of the season kicked off very strong for Karp on No Tivo, sweeping his heats before putting up a top 5 in the main, which is his best run of the year so far. The reigning Super Series champ found himself in a huge battle for the podium in last month's A-Main, a battle that didn't quite go the way he wanted. Still, Diego Morales put up yet another solid day and is very much in the overall hardware conversation, although his Masters compatriots are certainly putting pressure on him elsewhere. It was a career best run for Tyler Redman last month, scoring a fourth in the A-Main after battling with several others right at the end for it. Hovering just inside the top ten all season long, Redmond has steadily improved the game over the last couple of seasons and is starting to look like he can turn heat race prowess into hardware for the A-Main. And speaking of A-Main hardware, scoring his first piece was indeed Max DeMoss last month, good enough to bump him inside the top 10 for the first time this season. It was a day that set a new high, not just for the result, but also points, edging close to where he finished the 2020 season off. Moving on to the aforementioned Masters, and round number six was the shot in the arm that Diego needed to get a little bit of breathing room here in Masters as he gained points on all of the closest drivers to him going in. We head to a new Otivo track where he was the highest ranking Masters at the opener, so things could improve even more for the reigning champ this weekend. A career best performance was huge for Max DeMoss here in the Masters uh, category, leapfrogging from fifth to second in the standings, and now just 57 markers out of first. The key will be backing it up this weekend, and not only keeping the pressure on Morales, but lengthening his advantage on the rest of the class. Jose De Silva broke into the top three after he too put up a big day, at least his best of the season so far. This bumped him up from fourth, and more importantly, 
kept his title hopes alive at just 71 astern with four rounds to play. The former two-time Masters champ will need to fire back this weekend, and New Otivo is a track he's excelled at before. After back-to-back -back strong rounds, it was a flip of fortunes for Doug Yanni at round number six, slipping a little in the standings, but still in contention. He was at the clinic last week and will again be in the Ironman, so the drivers he needs to beat, he has the most seat time of the, in, on the track coming in. This weekend will be a bit of a rebound one for the former point leader in the class, as Evan Lawrence sees himself back from second to fifth after a rough round last month. Like Yanni, though, he has plenty of seat time from last week and can carry that into the track that the drivers have limited practice on. Now talking about grandmasters, and momentum is something I talk about a lot in these previews, and uh, there are a few drivers that are going in that carry as much as John Rice right now. Fresh off his first career win in the Sprint Series last week, Rice will be looking to add to his lead here in Grandmasters, as well as fight back in the Sportsman as well. Tony Waika looked pretty damn good last week as well, putting up a P3 in his heat and a P5 in the main at the Sprint Series. He looks to be running as good as ever, and did outscore John last round, but I wonder if maybe the gap is just too big to bridge right now. A career best day that saw him highest Grandmasters finisher last month, Mike Carlson finally put a day together for round number six. He steadily improved, and it culminated in a P7 and P4 in his heats for an A main berth and strong points day. Points that now see him in the hardware place for the first time. After a trio of solid rounds, Vince Azua slipped outside the top three with a tough round number six. And while the opener on Nuotivo wasn't superb, he started picking things up in round number three, which was also in the forward direction. Now it will be time to rebound and see if he can keep fighting for the hardware. Jeff Latimer is, uh, is absent from the entry list, and that probably means the end of his hardware shot here in 2021, uh, just with the amount of gap he has to the guys in front. And this weekend would have been tough, though, as he actually hasn't been on the layout since 2019 anyways. Going on to Sportsman here, and we have a new point leader. Able to capitalize with a solid day in the points, Diego Alvarado takes over the top spot for the first time this season. The reigning Sprint Series champ also looked promising on Nuo Tivo at the opener with a P3 in Heat 1, but issues in the second heat saw him start in the back. He'll want more of his current form from this time around on his first repeat track. Evan Lawrence had a Super Series to forget in round number 6, and now heads to a Nuo Tivo track that didn't treat him too nice either. It'll be a reset button time for the title contender this weekend, but he has more than just Diego to worry about, as there are only 10 points between him and third. And finding himself in the hardware spots for the first time this year is Donnie Clark, now just 13 points out of the top spot. That's what happens when you back up a career-best P6 in the A-Main, with a P7 last month, grabbing big points on your rivals as a result. More good news for Clark, he was the top-ranked sportsman driver at the opener on this track. John Rice slipped out of the hardware spots last month, but as I already mentioned, is flying high right now on the back of his first win. After a forgettable round number six, he'll be looking to put that behind him and take the fight to the front three like he's shown he can do all season. And speaking of career days, Carl Zhu put up one of his own last month, scoring a pair of top fives in his heats and then backing it up with, a first top, uh, with his first top 10 A main finish. This bumped him up into the top five, and while he still has a hefty amount of points out of the hardware, more of the same may see him contention by the end. Finally, our wild card uh, driver for the event, rolling in from Texas, Jordan Wallace, is not a name heard at Cal Speed for much these days, but he used to make some noise back in the day, winning the Machismo 12 hour in Supersport, as well as being a front runner at the Sport Cart Grand Nationals. Stepping out of the car and into the cart, let's see how he does in his return to Cal Speed this weekend. So that's the preview for round number seven of the 2021 Cal Speed Super Series. Appreciate you guys tuning in. We'll see you at the track.